Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for the first episode of my comeback recorded within Train Simulator. Um, this is a rather unexpected episode for me, as many of you are aware I've been having a lot of stability issues with the game recently, and it's been giving me a lot of blue screen of death issues, um, but since the Erosaline video that I uploaded the other day, this weekend I've been working with some friends to try and troubleshoot the issues that I've been having, and we think that we might have identified the problem and found a fix. And so so finally, I'm able to record my first route learning video back within Train Simulator, which has been very much requested uh, since I started uploading again the other week. Um, so I wanted to cover a route that I hadn't yet covered on this channel, which was released during my two-year hiatus. Um, which is the Fife Circle route, which runs from Edinburgh Waverley in Scotland um, right up to Glen Rhodes with Thornton and then back to Edinburgh again. And um, of course it's called the Fife Circle, much like the name, because um, as you go up the route the line splits and we're going to take the clockwise direction and we're going to go up to Glen Rhodes with Thornton via the clockwise route and then back again uh, via the alternate route to Edinburgh. Um, so this is actually two scenarios um, that come with a scenario pack available on the Allen Tom Thompson simulation website, uh, which are set, well this particular scenario is set in the year 2011, just because I wanted to do a, something a little bit different with the AI in terms of what you see as we're driving along, and of course I wanted to drive a different locomotive as well to uh, what comes with the route. Um, so the service that I'm driving is train 2 Golf 13 initially, um, departing from Edinburgh Waverley at 1708. And so for the first part, it's the departure from Edinburgh Waverley to Glen Rhodes with Thornton via Dunfermline um, for a total distance of just under 32 miles. Um, so our stops on the way up to Glen Rhodes with Thornton um, include Haymarket, South Guile, Inverkeithing, Rossyth, Dunfermline Town, Dunfermline Queen Margaret, Cowdenbeath, Loch Gelly, Cardendon, and Glen Rhodes with Thornton. Now, at Glen Rhodes with Thornton, um, the service then continues, so I'm going to load up the second scenario. Um, these are actually consecutive in that this is what the service does in real life, but I'm going to edit it together so it just appears as if I'm driving one continuous journey. So for the second part of the scenario from Edinburgh Waverley, sorry, should I say to Edinburgh Waverley, um, we depart Glen Rhodes with Thornton as train 2 Kilo 14, which is the 1814 departure uh, back to Edinburgh via Aberdour. Um, the distance for the second part of the journey is around 31 miles, giving a total journey distance of just under 63 miles, or around 62 and three quarter miles. Um, from Glen Rose with Thornton, our stops back to Edinburgh Waverley include Kirkcaldy, Kinghorn, Burntisland, Aberdour, or Aberdour, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that one, Dalgetty Bay, Inverkeithing, Dalmeny, South Guile, Haymarket, and finally back here at Edinburgh Waverley. As I mentioned a moment ago, I really wanted to do something different in terms of the train that I'm driving in this video versus the default stop that comes with the routes. Um, so the train that I'm driving is formed of a Class 67 diesel electric locomotive in EWS livery and six British Rail Mark II maroon liveried coaches. Uh, so the Class 67 locomotives uh, were built by Alstom at Valencia in Spain and uh, they were built between 1999 and 2000 with a total of 30 of these locomotives produced. Um, so they have a maximum speed of 125 miles per hour um, but we won't be able to get up to that on this journey today and besides that the coaches that we're hauling are limited to 100 miles per hour anyway um, but the maximum speed limit on this journey will be 90 miles per hour. Um, the total weight of each locomotive is around 90 tonnes and they have a maximum power output from the engine of 3000 1200 bhp or 2386 kilowatts at 900 rpm with an at rail um, power output of 2500 horsepower or 1864 kilowatts. Uh, the locomotives have a maximum tractive effort of 144 kilonewtons, uh, which is 32,000 pounds of force, with a continuous tractive effort of 92 kilonewtons, uh, which is 20,700 pounds of force at around 45 miles per hour. Thank you. 
I've now jumped into the cab of the Class 67 locomotive and in this particular scenario as the trains just arrived from a depot um, the locomotive is already set up ready for departure but I just wanted to talk about some of the controls very quickly here um, so just to the top left something that's quite important when accelerating away you can see the ammeter uh, so as we increase power then the uh, number of amps generated will increase and when that gets into the yellow zone uh, then in reality I believe that risk overloading the generators um, so what I'm going to try and do when accelerating is keep that within the green zone but I might sometimes take it into the yellow zone if necessary but just try not to take it in there for too long and certainly with this locomotive you don't just put it straight into full power as you pull away from a station um, so if we look over to the right hand side now you can see the throttle control there uh, it's currently in the idle stop position and there's actually eight notches of power on this locomotive um, due to the way that the engine works, it should be pointed out that if you're in, say, full power and you want to cut the power to ensure that you don't break the speed limit, you need to start cutting the power before you're at your target speed because it takes a while for the motors to run down and the train will still be accelerating even though the power handle is an idle. Um, I am just going to put the reversing handle into the forward position here um, as it was in the neutral position. Now if we go over to this side of the cab, um, just in front of us at the bottom left we've got the horn control which is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. And I should also mention at this point that I am using the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 67 Enhancement Pack here. Um, so if we now uh, look up the locomotive a bit, you can see we've got the speedometer there on the right of the screen. It's a digital speed readout, and I just wanted to mention the um, digits that you can see at the bottom of the speedometer, where it's in green and says plus zero zero. So from what I can work out, as you're accelerating or braking, that actually shows, uh, well, it's an accelerometer of sorts. Um, so if it, for example, said plus 30 and you were doing 20 miles per hour, then that means that within the next one minute you will have gained another 30 miles per hour and you'll be doing 50 miles per hour. And of course, conversely, if it says minus, then you're losing speed. But whatever number it reads, that's how many miles per hour you are losing or gaining within one minute. Now, if you look just to the left of the speedometer, you can see the brake gauge there. And if I just start releasing the brake, you can see the uh, needle is falling. Or should I say the needles are falling. Now just to mention with the brake handle in this locomotive it's a spring loaded brake so if I want to start releasing the brakes now if I press and hold the brake release button and now if I let go it goes back to the middle and it stops releasing the brakes further and now if I want to reapply the brakes at this point for a harder brake application I can just tap it just slightly to apply and you can see that the needle just jumps up a bit. So it gives you very precise control of the brake force within this loco. Um, though what I'm gonna try and do is drive uh, with passenger comfort in mind, depending on the gradient as to how hard the brakes are applied. But you don't really wanna go above about 2.5 and really three at most on the brake cylinder pressure gauge there. Um, the locomotive does also have an independent locomotive brake, which you can see there, which I'm just controlling. And that's also uh, slightly, well, it's slightly spring-loaded but it doesn't seem to work quite in the same way um, as the train brake but we won't really be using the independent brake on this journey. Um, so we have set up the train ready for departure. I just want to mention one final thing which is the DRA in front of us below the speedometer. It appears to be off but it's actually on. That's the driver reminder appliance and if you don't turn it off then you can't draw power to accelerate the train. So I'm going to click on it now and that's actually turned it off. And now if I click on it again it turns it on and it's actually illuminated. Now it seems to be a bug with this locomotive that when you load the scenario with the driver reminder appliance on um, it's not illuminated even though it's actually switched on. Uh, one other thing that I'm going to do, of course, before departure is open the windows, as I always like to do. And just because you get more of the sounds of the engine, and I just think it sounds better. So now let's just take another quick look outside the train before we depart on our journey towards Glen Roads with Thornton, and then back to Edinburgh Waverley again.
departing away from Edinburgh Waverley here, I applied two notches of power before fully releasing the brakes, just to give us a smooth and gentle start here. Um, so the starting speed limit here is 20 miles per hour, with around 1.4 miles to go to our first stop at Haymarket. And one of the things to mention about the throttle here is that you can go pretty much straight up to notch 5 of power as you pull away from a stop. And that will keep you in the green zone on the ammeter, but as you go above notch 5 that's when you'll start going into the yellow zone. I do apologise for any lag here around Edinburgh. Unfortunately this part of the route is a little bit laggy, especially when recording. Um, but certainly the frame rate should smooth out a lot as we get the other side of Edinburgh. As we get towards 20 miles per hour, I'm now going to cut the power right back. That woman there just uh, walked right in front of us. Um, I don't know, there's, I've noticed one thing with the people on this uh, route is that they do seem to like walking out off the platform onto the tracks in front of you, uh, floating at platform height of course. Uh, so currently we're in idle power and I'm just allowing the train to coast. I will go up to notch one as we get down to 18 miles per hour. So now I'm just giving us one notch of power there just to ensure we don't lose too much speed. Uh, something else I should mention um, about this locomotive that I didn't mention at the start is that in the cab here we've got uh, what's called the train length button. So if I just zoom in you can just see it there on the dashboard and when you click that it will give you a beeping sound. So if you click that as you pass a speed change for an increase in the speed limit you'll hear a beep and then as the rear of the train has cleared the speed board you'll then hear two beeps indicating that you can accelerate. Now, I don't generally use this normally, but just to demonstrate it here, the speed limit's now going up to 35 miles per hour. So I'll just click the button there, and we just heard one beep, and I'm just going to listen for the two beeps, and then I know we can accelerate up towards the new speed limit. We just got the two beeps, so now we can accelerate up towards 35 miles per hour. Uh, we're now going to go through quite a long tunnel here. As we exit the tunnel, Haymarket Station is immediately at the tunnel exit. So now we're doing just over 30 miles per hour. I didn't go above notch 5 of power at any point there. I'm now cutting the power back to idle and I'm going to apply the brakes just before we reach the tunnel exit here. Um, at Haymarket Station I'm aiming to stop at the 8-6 car stop sign near the end of the platform. So now coming towards the end of the tunnel, I'm just going to start applying some light braking to start bringing our speed down. So I've just gone up to number one on the brake gauge there, and that's a nice gentle brake application just to ensure that we don't enter the, enter the platform too fast. And on this journey I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, sort of gentle braking. You'll notice that the acceleration and braking on this train certainly aren't the best, and I don't really think it's suited to the start stop work um, that's involved on this journey. I'm just uh, releasing the brakes for a moment as we're going to stop a little bit too early there. And I see there's an S car stop sign, which I'm not sure why it's there on the platform, because normally that is the one at the very um, end of the platform. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place.
departing away from Haymarket, the speed limit was 35 miles per hour, though it's quickly gone up to 90 miles per hour, with around three and a third miles to go to our next stop at South Guile. So the line towards Carstairs and Glasgow Central has just diverged on the left. And coming along here as we get towards a stadium coming up on the right shortly, we've then got around one and a half miles to go to an upcoming 75 mile per hour speed limit. nicely accelerating up towards um, the current speed limit but what I'm going to do is I'm going to idle the power at just below 75 miles per hour and allow the train to coast at that point. So I'm now going to shut off the power, so we're doing around 73 miles per hour, uh, just to ensure that we don't end up exceeding 75, as the 75 limit will be starting shortly. Um, just after we've passed the 75 mile per hour speed post, we're then going to have a short downward gradient, uh, which could increase the speed. So you've just got to be prepared to use the brakes to control the speed if necessary. And then as we round quite a sharp right hand curve, the speed limit will then be going up to 90 miles per hour and we're going to apply the brakes for our stop at South Guile uh, as we reach the 90 mile per hour speed post. Uh, so we've just passed the 75 board there, we've now got the right hand curve I mentioned with the downward gradient. So we're now going to gain a little bit of speed. Speed limit's now gone up to 90, but I'm going to apply the brakes now for our stop. Just going to apply the brakes a little bit harder, as I'm not sure if we're slowing down quite quickly enough. Uh, I can see the platforms coming up ahead, just after the overbridge you can see. just reduce the braking a bit and here at South Guile station we need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. Stopping a little bit early there, so I'm just reducing the braking again for a moment. And now increase, and we should now be stopping in just about the right place.
Departing away from South Guile, the starting speed limit is still 90 miles per hour, with around 8.7 miles to go to the next stop, which is Inverkeithing. coming up on Edinburgh Gateway Station with seven and three quarter miles to go. After passing Edinburgh Gateway Station, I'm now going to be counting signals. So at the first signal after the station here, um, we've got just over one and a half miles to go to an upcoming 75 mile per hour speed limit. Coming up on the next signal and the 75 mile per hour speed limit comes into force just after the following signal the third signal after Edinburgh Gateway Station so uh, in a moment I'm going to idle the power as we get closer to 80 81 82 miles per hour and then prepare to brake as we approach the next signal coming up now cutting the power back I can see the signal coming up just ahead Let's now apply some braking just to ensure that we're down to 75 miles per hour in time. And now I'm going to release the brakes. And the 75 mile per hour speed restriction comes into force just here for this bridge coming up. And then the speed limit immediately goes back up to 90. Um, but as the speed limit goes back up to 90, we've got one mile to an upcoming 80 speed limit. and it's just gone up to 90 there. So right now I'm going to accelerate up towards 80 miles per hour and then shut off the power. Shut off the power around 78 miles per hour. The speed limit's now dropping to 80, one mile from an upcoming 50 speed limit, which is in force for the fourth bridge, uh, which we're going to be crossing shortly. I'm going to apply the brakes for the upcoming 50 in a moment as a track joins ours from the left. So we've now got the track joining from the left and I'm now going to start applying the brakes for the upcoming 50 speed limit. Uh, so before the 50 speed limit, we're going to pass through Dalmeny station, which we're not stopping at, um, but we will be stopping at this station as we come back in the opposite direction. So I'm just reducing the braking now, so I thought we might be slowing down slightly too early there. Uh, we're now passing Dalmeny station. And the 50 speed limit's coming into force just after we've passed the signal coming up just ahead. Okay, 
that's now released the brakes. Uh, we're now entering the fourth bridge, uh, which we're going to be crossing for a little while here. Uh, so the fourth bridge has actually been open since 1890, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, the total length of the bridge is 8,094 feet, or 2,467 meters. So I'm currently in notch two of power as we cross the bridge, and that seems to be pretty much holding us for now. do in fact have an adverse cautionary signal here so I'm just cutting off the power at this point. Um, we've got one more signal to go before the next uh, home signal which is coming up uh, towards the end of the bridge so I'm just going to prepare to slow down to uh, potentially have to stop at a red signal. can now see that the signal ahead is displaying a red aspect so I'm just bringing our speed down now uh, to bring us to a stop in front of the signal and in fact it's just jumped to green so brakes off and we can start reapplying power once again and just after we've crossed the bridge here we're going to pass through North Queens Ferry Station um, and as we pass through North Queens Ferry at this point we're going to be on a down 1 in 70 grade and at North Queen's Ferry, we've got just over half a mile to go to an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. going to shut off the power around 40 miles per hour. Um, we're going to go through this tunnel here and then um, we need to ensure that we're slowing down for 40 miles per hour at the tunnel exit and we're going to be continuing on this down one in 70 grade for a while. So we're now reaching the tunnel exit I'm now going to apply the brakes to ensure that we're down to 40 in time. just see the 40 mile per hour speed post coming up but we do still need to use the brakes at this point to control our speed as we're still on a downward gradient. In a moment the speed limit will be going back up to 50 miles per hour but as it does so uh, we've got around half a mile to another 40 mile per hour speed limit. Speed limit's now about to go back up to 50. What I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to release the brakes, allow the train to just go in a little bit of speed through coasting, and then we're going to enter another tunnel before Inverkeithing Station uh, with the uh, 40 mile per hour speed limit coming into force just at the tunnel exit there. applying some light braking to ensure that we are down to 40 miles per hour in time and I want to continue braking for Inver the 
to say, I'll get my words right in a second. Continue braking for Inverkeithing Station as we exit the tunnel. I'm going to be braking lightly for now, but we are going to have a short, steep downward gradient into the platform here. So we've just uh, started on the downward gradient. I've increased the braking now just to ensure that it doesn't affect our braking distance too badly. And here at Inverkeithing Station, I want to stop at the 6 slash S sign near the end of the platform. Stopping just slightly too early, so I'll just reduce the braking momentarily. Now just increasing to bring us to a stop in just about the right place. Departing away from Inverkeithing, the starting speed limit was 40 miles per hour, though quickly dropping to 30 miles per hour, with around one and a half miles to go to the next stop at Rosyth. Uh, so here at this junction, the route diverging to the right is the Scottish East Coast mainline towards Dundee and Aberdeen, and we will actually be coming back on that route. Um, so this is actually the start of the circle at this point. As we reach 30 miles per hour, I'm now going to shut off the power just to allow the train to coast at this point. The speed limit here is now going up to 65 miles per hour with just under one mile to go to Rosyth Station. So I'm going to accelerate in a moment, just give uh, the rear of the train chance to clear the speed post. And I'm going to power up at this point as we approach the second overbridge here. Um, at the next signal coming up we've got uh, 0.6 miles to go to Rosyth Station. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to accelerate up towards 40 miles per hour and I'm just going to allow the train to coast at that point. Uh, we are on a shallow up upwards gradient at this point so the train will lose some speed as I coast. Then I'm going to apply the brakes as I see the platform ahead to bring us to a stop at the end of the platform. We've now reached 40 miles per hour. I've shut off the power at this point. Now I'm just looking out for the platforms ahead. Um, I can now see the platform coming up just ahead, so I'm just going to apply the brakes at this point to bring our speed down. And as I said, here at Rosyth Station, I want to stop at the end of the platform. So I'm just going to reduce the braking now, as I think we might be slowing down just a little bit too quickly. And you can 
can see the 6S sign just coming up just ahead and that's uh, pretty much the correct point to stop. So I'm going to stop just as the end of the platform disappears from the windscreen. You now I can't see the end and we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Rosyth Station here, the speed limit is still 65 miles per hour, with around 2.2 miles to go to the next stop at Dunfermline Town. And just a note at this point, when you start at Rosyth, you're actually starting on a 1 in 125 upward gradient. Uh, so I actually applied three notches of power before releasing the brakes, just to ensure that we didn't roll back. So the gradient along here is going to steepen to as steep as 1 in 99 and as you can see the acceleration rate on the class 67 is abysmal uh, on this kind of service which is why I said earlier I don't think it's suited to the start stop nature of this journey. Um, I think a, a multiple unit is much more suited to this and I'm not quite sure why they ever thought of scheduling a class 67 to do such a run um, but I still enjoy driving it I really do so um, that's why I wanted to drive it in this video So uh, what I'm going to do now, as I see the next signal, I'm going to cut the power back a bit as the speed limit is shortly dropping to 50 miles per hour. So I can now see the next signal coming up. So I'm just going to cut the power back now to notch 3 and I need to go between notches 3 and 4 to maintain the speed at this point. As we reach the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit, we've then got 0.8 miles to go to Dunfermline Town. So we've just passed the 50 mile per hour speed post now and I'm still going, going to go between notch 3 and 4, I should I say notch 3 and 4 right now, it seems to be more like notch 4 and 5 to try and maintain the power due to the gradient. Um, so as for the braking point for Dunfermline Town I'm going to apply the brakes as a track joins us from the left in a moment. And now cutting the power back I can see the track just about to join us, I'm going to allow the train to coast at this point. applying the brakes quite lightly. We are on an upward gradient um, which is going to help with the braking uh, so I don't need to brake especially hard and we might be braking slightly early though I can see the platform coming up just now. Um, so you don't really want to in this loco enter a platform at any faster than about 25 miles per hour is generally my recommendation to come to a fairly smooth and controlled stop. So we're entering the platform now. Here at Dunfermline Town, we need to stop at the end of the platform. I should note that yes, at the last station I actually didn't quite stop in the right place. We should have stopped slightly further up as the, passen or as the no passengers beyond this point sign disappeared uh, from the driver's windscreen. 
reducing the braking again as we're stopping slightly too early. Of course, the gradient is still slowing us down. And you can see the stopping point there with the S4 and 3. I'm giving us a tiny bit of power to ensure that we don't end up stopping too early. And we should now be coming in to stop in just about the right place. Starting away from Dunfermline Town, the speed limit here is 50 miles per hour, though quickly going up to 65 miles per hour, with around 1.6 miles to go to the next stop at Dunfermline Queen Margaret. So as we pulled away from uh, Dunfermline Town, I actually applied four notches of power before releasing the brakes, uh, because you start there on a steep 1 in 80 upgrade. So although the speed limit just went up to 65 miles per hour, it's actually shortly going back down to 55. So the speed limit's now going back down to 55 miles per hour with 1.2 miles to go and the start of an even steeper upward gradient at 1 in 73. As we get towards 55 miles per hour, I'm going to cut off the power and allow the train to coast. We will, of course, lose speed due to the steep upward gradient. As we reach this signal coming up, we've got around half a mile to go to our stop. So I'll apply the brakes shortly after passing this signal. I'm not going to have to apply the brakes too hard on this curve initially because of the upward gradient. So we're going to go up to number one on the brake gauge. And then I'll increase the braking as we get closer if necessary. So I am now increasing the braking as I can see the platform coming up and we're definitely coming in a bit on the quick side. It's up to 2.5 on the brake gauge just to ensure that we're not entering the platform at any faster than 25 miles per hour. And here at uh, Dunfermline Queen Margaret we need to stop at the end of the platform. So I've just uh, cut the braking right back as we were going to stop way too early there. see the S6 sign so that's roughly where we need to stop and we should now be stopping in just about the right place
Starting away from Dunfermline Queen Margaret, the speed limit is 55 miles per hour and soon going up to 65 miles per hour. As you probably noticed as I pulled away there, I uh, once again went up to notch 4 of power before releasing the brakes, um, as we are starting on a 1 in 75 upward gradient. And at this point we've got around 4 miles to go to our next stop, which is Caldenbeath. see due to the uh, steep upward gradient here the acceleration rate is painfully slow gaining 12 miles an hour a minute at that point so I've got up to notch six of power I'm taking us into the yellow zone on the ammeter uh, just to try and give us a bit of a boost because uh, 12 miles an hour a minute does seem a little bit too low for acceleration why but I keep hearing on the audio every once in a while a sort of slight clicking sound um, I don't know if you can hear that in the video or if it's just my speakers um, so I'm just trying to work out if it's the game or my speakers so if you do notice it then please do let me know in the comments because I need to look into that I don't know if it's the loco uh, the game speakers anything like that so at this overbridge coming up just here as the tracks have just gone back to two we've got around three and a quarter miles to go to our stop As we get towards 65 miles per hour, I need to go between notches 5 and 6 of power. And at this signal just here, we've now got around 2 miles to go. I'm just currently in notch 6 of power actually, rather than fluctuating between. I've just cut down to notch 6 and we're gradually accelerating up towards 65 miles per hour. Um, but in a moment I'm actually going to idle the power as we reach the next signal. At that point we've then got just over one mile to go to our stop. So we've got just over a mile to go and the gradient has levelled at this point. So I've now cut the power back to idle. What I'm looking out for now is some houses on the right and an overbridge, and I'm going to break at that overbridge. So you can just see the houses on the right there behind the trees, and we've got the overbridge here, so I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment just as we pass under the bridge. I'm 
going to go up to number two on the brake gauge initially and we'll go from there. We do have a short upward gradient as we come towards the station here which is aiding with our braking. Though I'm not sure if we're quite, quite slowing down quick enough. Um, we just passed a warning for an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed limit which comes into force after our stop here at Caldenbeath. And there's people walking across the tracks. What are you doing? That guy looks demented. <laughs> so I just um, released the brakes for a moment just because we were stopping a little bit too quick. Now I'm aiming to stop at the end of the platform here by the, uh, I think it's 6, 4 and S sign. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Cowdenbeath, the speed limit is 65 miles per hour, though very quickly going down to 20 miles per hour, with around two miles to go to the next stop at Loch Galley. So we just got a warning there for an upcoming 30 speed limit, which seems a bit pointless as we've got to slow down to 20 um, before that 30 speed limit comes into force. So what's going to happen now, we've got a 20 speed limit, which will then jump up to 60 and then very quickly drop back down to 30. So I've just cut off the power there and I'm applying the brakes now just to start bringing our speed down. Um, the 20 mile per hour speed limit here coming up in a moment. For some reason we've got a 60 board here first, I don't quite know why. And we've got this 20 mile per hour speed limit coming up in a moment and the 20 speed limit's actually on a downgrade of one in 91, which means that I am going to use the brakes to control the speed. So at this point I'm looking at the accelerometer on the uh, speedometer there. And I'm going to try and use the brakes to get that as close to zero as possible. So currently we're gaining five. And now we're losing one. So we're pretty much close to zero there. Just going to cut the braking very slightly. There we are. And I'll just add a little bit of braking if we reach 20 miles per hour. Which it looks like we will do. The acceleration was uh, actually increasing quite rapidly for a moment there. So as I mentioned a moment ago, the speed limit here is going up to 60 miles per hour, though quickly down to 30. So what I'm going to do, just because of the speed we're going, I'm going to use the train length button at this point to know when we're clear of the 60 board. And then I'm just going to allow the train to coast up in speed. So I know we're now clear. The gradient did shallow for a moment, but it is going to steepen again in a moment. Um, so what I found is along here, rather than um, using too much power, especially due to the way the timetable works, um, you can just coast up from here, and we're pretty much going to coast all of the way to Loch Gelly Station. So the speed limit here has now dropped to 30. I'm going to allow us to coast through here, and as we get towards 30 miles per hour, I'll use the brakes to control the speed if necessary.
to it. Just getting up towards 30 now, so I'm just going to use a little bit of braking here. The speed limit's now going up to 60 miles per hour, so I'm going to allow the train to coast up from here. So I've just completely released the brakes and will allow, allow the train to gain a bit of speed. The gradient has shallowed again for a moment, but again it's about to steepen and we should gain speed a little bit quicker. So as the speed limit went up to 60 miles per hour, we had only three quarters of a mile to go to our next stop. So as you see, we're gaining speed now around 13, 14 miles per hour per minute. And I'm going to apply the brakes for Lock Gurley Station as I see the platform ahead, which I can now see just coming up on the left-hand side. Braking to enter the platform at no faster than around 25. I need to stop here at the end of the platform. realised I probably wasn't slowing down quick enough due to the downward gradient, so I added a bit of a harder brake force than I've been tending to use on this journey, and now I'm just cutting that back. Sometimes I do find it a bit difficult to adjust the brakes on this to stop just right. Um, but as you can see, we need to stop by the 6, 3 and S sign coming up just here. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Lock Gully Station, the speed limit here is 60 miles per hour and we're starting on a 1 in 81 downward gradient with just over 2 miles to go to the next stop at Cardendon. As you can see, the downward gradient is helping our acceleration here, and we're able to pull away much quicker than uh, some of the other stops on this journey, though the acceleration is still far lower in this train uh, compared to the trains I would normally drive in Train Simulator. So I'm just going to go up to full power for a moment, bring us up to 50 miles per hour, and then I'm going to cut the power right back to idle. I'm going to allow the train to coast along here as we're on a, still on the steep downward gradient. The next signal coming up, we've got around one mile to go to Cardendon and the grade is going to shallow. So I'm just going to allow the train to coast along here for now. And then I'll be looking out in a moment for landmarks ready to start slowing down for our stop. So we're going to pass around this left curve here, and then there's going to be an underbridge we're going to cross. Uh, as we reach that point, I'm then going to apply the brakes. So now I've got the brakes on it, around 2.5 on the brake gauge there, which is uh, bringing our speed down quite nicely. And you can see the platforms coming up just ahead. And 
here at Conde and here at Cardenden, <laughs> getting my words jumbled up again, um, we need to stop at the end of the platform, which uh, I must say I'm breaking quite hard because I realised that we probably weren't going to stop quite quick enough. And now we're probably stopping slightly too early, so I've just fully released the brakes. Applied the brakes slightly harder than I intended, but we, we weren't slowing down quite quick enough, so I did need to add a bit more braking there. We should now be stopped in just about the right place. Starting away from Cardenden, the speed limit is 60 miles per hour, with around 5 miles to go to the next stop at Glenroths with Thornton, where of course we become another service and we uh, then continue the journey uh, via the alternate route back towards Edinburgh Waverley. I also wanted to apologise if you hear any background noise in this video. Um, I do live in a fairly small flat, but I do live with other people, and uh, of course, uh, sometimes they do make noise. So uh, if you do hear anything, I do apologise. As we get up towards 60 miles per hour, I'm then going to cut the power back and we're going to go between notches 2 and 3 uh, to try and maintain our speed close to 60. back for a moment as I thought we might actually accelerate just a bit above 60 uh, miles per hour but I've managed to bring that back under control we're currently under notch two of power drop to 58 miles per hour. I've just added a notch of power to bring us back up to 60 and then I'll cut back once again uh, as we reach 60 miles per hour. Uh, the line now diverging off to the left leads to Thornton Sidings. So in a moment a line is going to join us from the left, which is the route from Thornton Sidings. And at the next signal after that we've then got one mile to go to our stop. 
and then there is a limit, or should I say the speed limit is dropping to 30 and then 15 miles per hour quickly before the station. So the 30 and 15 are very close together. Tracks are now joining from the left from Thornton Sidings as I mentioned and the next signal coming up gives us one mile to go. shut off the power as we reach this signal. I'm going to start applying the brakes for the upcoming 15 mile per hour speed limit um, as we uh, approach the signal for the opposite track, the next signal for the opposite track on the right hand side. So I can just see that signal now coming up so let's now start applying the brakes to bring us down to 15 miles per hour. I'm going to make quite a hard brake application at this point and then gradually reduce the braking as we get closer. So probably slowing down slightly too quickly there. So I'm just cutting the braking back. I can see the uh, speed boards coming up just ahead and the 15 mile per hour speed limit comes into force immediately at this junction coming up. As you can see by the feather indicator on the signal we will be crossing right on these points. So we're now down to 15 miles per hour and we're now coming into Glen Roads with Thornton Station. And here at this station, once again, I want to stop at the end of the platform. And then as I pan outside, we're going to have jumped to the next scenario. And of course, it should be a seamless transition within the video. should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Glen Roads with Thornton, the speed limit here is 20 miles per hour with around 5 miles to go to the next stop, which is Kakaldi. So I'm just going to cut the power back now as we're approaching 20 miles per hour to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. So I've just gone into idle for a moment and then as we start rounding this uh, right hand curve here, uh, the gradient's going to start going uphill as steep as 1 in 61. And so I'm going to have to use the power to ensure we don't lose too much speed. So we're just entering the curve now. Let's go up to notch one of power. You can see how we're going to be losing four miles an hour a minute, and that's now increasing as more of the train ends up on this upward gradient. So of course at this point, uh, we have now become train uh, two kilo one four, which is the 1814 departure from Glen Rose with Thornton back to Edinburgh Waverley. So 
after rounding this very sharp curve here, we're now about to join the Scottish East Coast Mainline, uh, the route from Dundee and Aberdeen, which I mentioned at Inverkeithing earlier, uh, which diverged to the right. Uh, so we're now joining this, and we're now going to travel back down towards Inverkeithing, of course, and rejoin uh, where we left off, and then uh, follow the full return bit uh, between Inverkeithing and Edinburgh. So I'm just cutting the power back now as the gradient has shallowed. I want to ensure that we don't end up breaking the speed limit. The speed limit's going up to 80 miles per hour now that we've joined the main line and we can accelerate just before the left-hand curve that you can see coming up just ahead. At this point, we've got around 4.3 miles to go to Kirkaldy. So we are now on a medium upward grade of 1 in 131, which is affecting our acceleration. Um, and I'm going to increase the power now towards full power. I've noticed once we get to around 35 miles per hour, you can go above notch 6 of power um, without going too far into the yellow zone on the ammeter. So at the next signal coming up, we've got 3.7 miles to go. Here now the grade is going to change so we're going to go from a, a shallow upward gradient to a downward gradient of 1 in 158. And you can see the grade change coming up just here. At the next signal coming up we've then got 2.7 miles to go to Kakaldi and around 1.2 miles to go to an upcoming 65 mile per hour speed limit. Seems to be a bit laggier along this bit for some reason, I'm not quite sure why, hopefully that will all uh, calm down again soon. So I'm going to cut the power now, just as we're doing just above 70 miles per hour. Uh, the 65 mile per hour speed limit comes into force at the next signal. So we're going around a right curve here with a footbridge there, a sort of girder footbridge. And then what I'm looking out for now is another curve with another girder footbridge, just like that. And at that point I'm then going to apply the brakes to ensure that we're down to 65 miles per hour in time. can now see the footbridge I was talking about, so now I'm going to go up to two on the brake gauge to ensure that we slow down in time. So I've slowed down to a bit below 65, and you can see the 65 limits coming into force. We've got around 1.4 miles to go at this point. I'm just going to allow the train to coast. We've got a down 1 in 105 gradient, which could cause us to increase speed a bit. So we've now got this long straight here, we're going to cross a bridge in a moment and then we've got a left curve coming up. So I'm going to apply the brakes for, for Kirkcaldy Station um, just as we reach that left hand curve.
So just reaching the curve now, and let's apply the brakes. We are still on a downward grade, which will affect our braking. So I'm going up to 2.5 on the brake gauge for now, and I'll reduce that as we get closer to cool, cool. <laughs> It's uh, so difficult sometimes to get my words out uh, as we get closer to Kirkaldi. There we are. We might be slowing down just slightly too early here, here at Kirkcaldy Station. I want to stop at the 6 or, or well, six and S sign at the end of the platform. So you can see the 6 and S sign coming up on the left, near the end of the platform. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Kirkcaldy here, the speed limit is 65 miles per hour, though soon going up to 75, and we've got around 3 miles to go to the next stop at Kinghorn. Speed limit's now going up to 75 miles per hour, and at the next signal coming up, we've got around two and a half miles to go to Kinghorn. At the next signal coming up, we've got around one and two thirds of a mile to go to an upcoming, um, so I say, I'll, I'll get my words right in a sec. At the next signal coming up, we've got around one and two thirds of a mile to go to our stop and just over one mile to go to an upcoming 65 mile per hour speed limit. Um, I'm just having a bit of a problem reading my notes for a moment there. Um, so I've just cut off the power here at 70 miles per hour and the train should coast down to 65. In a moment we're going to be running alongside the North Sea as well. I do think that this section of the route is very pretty, very scenic. Um, as we reach the 65 mile per hour speed limit, we've then got around 0.4 miles to an upcoming 45 limit and 0.6 miles to go to our stop.
So I've coasted down to 65 in time. The 65 limit's now coming into force here. And I'm now going to start applying the brakes for Kinghorn Station. see the platforms coming up just ahead and here at Kinghorn I want to stop at the end of the platform and uh, just to note the speed limit is dropping to, or has dropped to 45 miles per hour. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Kinghorn, the speed limit was 45 miles per hour, though it is quickly dropping to 30 miles per hour. And we've got around 2.6 miles to go to the next stop, which is Burntisland. So the speed limit is dropping to 30 miles per hour here immediately before this tunnel. So I'm going to cut the power in a moment just below 30 to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. And I'm going to allow the train to coast at this point. speed limit is now increasing to 65 miles per hour. this signal just here and we've got around one and a half miles to go and just over a mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit which is in turn just a quarter of a mile before a 40 mile per hour speed limit so as we now reach 60 miles per hour I'm cutting off the power to allow the train to coast at this point going to start braking for the upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit approaching the next signal and then once we reach the 50 limit um, we've got just under half a mile to go to our stop I can now see the signal just coming up it's just gone behind a tree and now it's reappearing so now I'm going to apply to ensure that we slow down to 50 in time
now that we're down to 50, we might be down slightly too early. I'm just going to um, release the brakes momentarily. And I'm going to reapply the brakes lightly just as we pass the 50 mile per hour speed post. So just passing the speed post now. Let's just uh, make a light brake application and then I'll adjust the braking as we get closer to the station. So the speed limit's now just dropped further to 40 miles per hour. We are on a downward gradient here coming into our stop, so I'm actually braking a bit harder again than I normally would, though I'm going to cut that back. And here at Burnt's Land, we need to stop at the end of the platform. should now be stopping in just about the right place. away from Burnt's Land, the speed limit here is 40 miles per hour, though soon going up to 75, and um, we've got around two and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Aberdour. And just to make a note, as we departed away from Burnt's Land Station, we started on a 1 in 101 downward gradient. Speed limit's now going up to 75 miles per hour. At this next signal coming up, we've got around 2.6 miles to go. Sorry, correction, 2.3 miles to go. This next signal coming up, we've got just over 1.6 miles to go and around one mile to go to an upcoming 55 mile per hour speed limit. We're also at the start of a long up gradient at this point. I'm going to cut the power back in a moment as we get towards 70 miles per hour and I'm going to brake for the upcoming 55 limit um, as we approach the next signal. braking lightly for the upcoming 55 limit and as the speed limit drops to 55 miles per hour we've then got around two-thirds of a mile to go and just over half a mile to go to an upcoming 55 limit I don't know why I just realized what I just said to an upcoming 55 limit when we're already doing 55 so for some reason there's a 55 limit mark twice on the HUD and I've written it down twice in my notes I'm not quite sure why and I just started braking slightly too early there uh, the braking point actually is this overbridge that you can see just coming up so I'm gonna brake just slightly after that now
And so now I'm going to start applying the brakes again, just very lightly, and I'll adjust the braking as we get closer to our stop. And um, as we enter Abadawa Station, the speed limit is dropping to 50 miles per hour. Here at Avadawa, I'm aiming to stop once again at the end of the platform. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Abadawa, the speed limit here is 50 miles per hour, though quickly going up to 75 miles per hour, with around two and three quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Dalgetty Bay. The gradient uh, very quickly after departure started uh, going upwards at one in 100, uh, which is currently affecting our acceleration. So at the last signal we passed, we had 2.3 miles to go to Dalgetty Bay. And at the next signal, we've got around 1.5 miles to go. And at the next signal, we're at the start of a long downgrade at one in 94, uh, which will of course uh, cause us to gain speed and affect our braking uh, as we get closer to the next stop. So we've now got around 1.5 miles to go, and as I said, this is the start of a long downgrade at 1 in 94. What I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to shut down the power as we approach 65 miles per hour and just allow the train to coast along here. So there's two overbridges between the signal we've just passed and the next signal. We've just passed the first of those overbridges, and at the second bridge, that's where I'm going to start applying the brakes for our stop, um, up to between 2.5 and 3. So this is quite a hard brake application uh, due to the downward gradient that we're on. So we've just reached that second overbridge now. 
So now making a brake application initially up to three on the brake gauge and then I'll reduce it now as we get a bit closer. Now increasing the braking again as I can see the platform coming up just ahead. And here at Dalgetty Bay I want to stop at the end of the platform. Possibly slowed down slightly too much there. So I'm just reducing the braking for a moment. And now let's increase again as we get closer to the end of the platform. should now be stopping in just about the right place. Starting away from Dalgetty Bay, the starting speed limit is 75 miles per hour and we started on a 1 in 94 downward gradient uh, with around 1.5 miles to go to the next stop which is Inverkeithing for the second time. The next signal coming up we've got around a third of a mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit and the 50 mile per hour speed limit is around a third of a mile from an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. So I'm going to cut the power back now and just idle the power just below 50 miles per hour. I will use the brakes if necessary to control the speed as I think we might still be on the downward gradient. Yes we are. So just a little bit of braking there to ensure we don't end up exceeding 50. I've now released the brakes as it seems that the gradient has now shallowed and the 50 mile per hour speed limit is about to come into force. So I'm just going to start braking very lightly for the upcoming 40 mile per hour speed limit. We've got around half a mile to go to Inverkeithing at this point. So I've continued to slow down below 40 miles per hour just with a very light brake application at number one on the brake gauge there. And we're now coming up towards Inverkeithing station. You can see the platforms coming up just ahead. And so we've now joined the route that we left earlier, about an hour, hour and a half ago, something like that. So here at Inverkeithing I want to stop at the 6-S sign which is near the end of the platform. I thought I was coming in just a little bit too slowly there so I've just been adjusting the braking and uh, I can now see that we're coming up on the 5 and 4 car stop sign. And you've got the 6 and the S coming up just after that. And 
we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Starting away from Inverkeithing, the speed limit here is 40 miles per hour, though soon going up to 65 miles per hour, with around 3.7 miles to go to the next stop at Dalmany. And just to mention, um, we are actually on a bit of an upgrade as we depart away from Inverkeithing in the southbound direction, so I went up to notch 4 of power before fully releasing the brakes, uh, just to ensure that we didn't roll back. very steep upward gradient as we head towards this tunnel which is uh, certainly affecting our acceleration back down to 12 miles an hour per minute so I'm just going to give us a little bit of power and take us back into that yellow zone again um, the speed limit here is going up to 65 miles per hour just as we enter this tunnel So along here now, the speed limit's going to be dropping to 60 miles per hour shortly, just before we can reach 60 miles per hour. And as the speed limit drops to 60, we've then got just over half a mile to go to an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed limit. We're actually going to be on a steep upward gradient now, pretty much all of the way back to the fourth bridge. still hearing the audio clipping on this I do think it might be the game so I'm gonna to have to have a look at this um, as we think it might have been an audio issue that was originally causing the game to crash but um, hopefully I can get that sorted soon so I'm now going to cut the power back the speed limit drops to 50 miles per hour just as we exit this tunnel here I'd like to give a correction to that. The uh, train is going to coast down to 50 by the tunnel exit, but the 50 mile per hour speed limit actually comes into force just the other side of the platform here at uh, North Queen's Ferry Station. Now giving us some power to ensure that we don't lose too much speed, and then as we get onto the bridge I'm going to cut the power back a little. Um, I think it's roughly notch two that we need to be at as we're crossing the bridge. So I've now cut the power back to notch 2 just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. And um, Dalmany Station actually uh, is just after we've left the fourth bridge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut the power off completely as we've passed the uh, final sort of big arch of the bridge here. And then I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at Dalmany uh, as we approach the signal at the very end of the bridge. Now 
I'm going to idle the power at this point and I'm going to apply the brakes as we approach the next signal. see the signal coming up just ahead displaying a, a yellow aspect and we've also got a feather indication indicating left because just after Dalmany station we're actually um, scheduled to go into the uh, Dalmany loops where we're going to be held for another train to overtake us. Coming in a little bit quick there so um, just applying some braking just to bring our speed down nicely and here at Dalmany we need to stop at the 6s which is near the end of the platform. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Dalmany, the uh, speed limit is dropping to 40 miles per hour as we cross into the up loops here just to the left. And we've got around 4.8 miles to go to the next stop, which is South Guile for the second time. So as we're accelerating to these loops here, and I know we're going to have to stop at the red signal at the end to wait for a train to overtake us. Um, I'm not going to go much faster than about 10 miles per hour at this point. I'm just going to gradually bring us to a stop in front of the signal ahead. just gently bringing us to a stop now and as we stop here the uh, stops actually for 10 minutes and obviously I'm going to cut that right down um, but I'll certainly show you the train that's uh, been holding us up as it goes past and then as we depart away from here we're going to be under cautionary signals for a short time um, as we head down towards South Guile and Edinburgh.
departing away from the loops here, the speed limit is still 40 miles per hour with around 4.6 miles to go to South Guile Station. And of course we did depart on a single yellow signal with the signal sections here being very close together. It's about a third of a mile to the next signal. I can see it just ahead currently displaying a red aspect. So I'll just cut the power off and it's just jumped to a yellow now so we can just start increasing the power once again. So the train that passed us that was holding us up was the Inverness to Edinburgh service, uh, which we were looped so that it could overtake us. speed limit went up to 80 miles per hour as we rejoined the main line here and then further up to 90 miles per hour uh, although there is a further decrease in the speed limit down to 75 coming up shortly going to cut the power back a bit now as we get just over 70 miles per hour to ensure we don't end up going above 75. Uh, the 75 speed limit is quite short and then the speed limit immediately goes back up to 90 afterwards. So here we are 75 and then 90. At this point we've got around 2.7 miles to go. At the next signal that you can see just coming up at the overbridge there, we've got around two miles to go. At the next signal coming up, we've got around 1.4 miles to go. I'm going to shut off the power as we reach 80 miles per hour. To our right, I believe that is Edinburgh Airport. So I've now cut the power down to um, idle, just as we reach 79 miles per hour there. I'm going to allow the train to coast at this point. In a moment, we're going to be coming up on Edinburgh Gateway Station with around one mile to go. And I'm going to apply the brakes just as we reach the other end of the platform. So if the signal here is double yellow, you're definitely cleared into South Guile Station. Here at South Guile, we're aiming to stop once again at the end of the platform. We 
should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from South Gyle, the speed limit here is 90 miles per hour, with around 3.3 miles to go to the next stop at Haymarket. And at the next signal, we've got just 0.2 miles to an upcoming 75 speed limit. Speed limit's now dropping to 75 miles per hour for this sharp left curve, which we rounded earlier. And then just after the curve, the speed limit's going back up to 90. Now coming up on the line to Edim, sorry, the line to Glasgow Queen Street via Falkirk High, which is just joining us here on the right. The speed limit's now going back up to 90 miles per hour with 1.6 miles to go to an upcoming 50 limit and 2.3 miles to go to our stop. reached the warning for an upcoming 50 limit one mile from the speed limit itself so I've just shut off the power at this point to allow the train to coast and I'll start braking shortly as we get a bit closer to the stadium on the left. The lag's certainly getting worse I know as we get closer into Edinburgh again unfortunately and I do apologize for any lag on this journey unfortunately it's a bit beyond my control uh, I do find when recording with Train Simulator, I can't get a stable 60 frames a second, so I try recording in 30. Um, but unfortunately, um, then I can't get a stable 30 frames a second. Even though normally, under normal circumstances, I'm probably averaging 40 to 50 if I'm not recording. And sometimes a lot higher. Um, so I've slowed down to 50. We just had a 35 warning for a speed limit that comes into force just before Haymarket platform. We're now passing Haymarket Depot on the left-hand side. The 50 limits come into force and I can see the platforms coming up in the distance for Haymarket Station. So I want to ensure that I'm down to 35 before we enter the platform. And here at Haymarket I want to stop at the S sign near the end. Let's continue braking lightly to slow us down towards 35 and of course I want to enter the platform at no faster than 25 anyway. Once again the line from Glasgow Central via Carstairs is just joining us on the right. So 
So now we're entering the platform here at Haymarket, just increasing the braking. I entered the platform at a good 25 miles an hour there. Stopping just slightly too early, so I'll just reduce the braking momentarily. And you can see the S sign just coming up on the left. And we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Haymarket Station, the speed limit is 35 miles per hour, with around 1.3 miles to go to the next and final stop, as well as of course the first uh, stop on this journey, Edinburgh Waverley. So the speed limits here are identical in reverse, um, 35 miles per hour here. Just as we get to the other side of the tunnel at the next signal, the speed limit then drops down to 20 miles per hour. As we reach this signal just here, we've got around a third of a mile to go to the upcoming 20 limit. I've just cut the power off here to allow the train to coast, and I'm going to apply the brakes uh, just before the exit of the tunnel. So we're going to go around the left curve, and as the tunnel exit comes into view, I'm then going to apply the brakes. Just see the tunnel exit coming into view there, get the brakes on now to ensure that we're down to 20 at the next signal. And you can see that signal coming up now just ahead. And then as we get down to 20 miles per hour I'm going to release the brakes and just allow the train to coast pretty much all of the way into Edinburgh Waverley. So as we enter Edinburgh Waverley Station, we're scheduled to stop in Platform 1. But to get to Platform 1, we actually have to travel through Platform 20. Um, so if you're driving this scenario, just make sure that you don't stop too early. So we're now coming into platform 20 here, as I mentioned, and as we go through, we're going to pass the signal, you can see the single yellow signal coming up just ahead, and then we're going to pass some scissor points, and then after we've passed the scissor points, we then enter platform 1, and we need to stop literally right at the end. So we're just reaching the end of platform 20 now, there's the signal, there's the scissor points that I mentioned. We're now entering Platform 1. So 
So I've currently got the brakes on lightly just to bring our speed down. towards the end of the platform now. Um, I do like it actually when we've got sort of scenario set a change of eras um, in terms of liveries so like we've got this very mixed uh, class 91 set next to us and I don't know why I always like to see that just something a bit different a bit odd. Okay so we're now coming to the end of the platform and we should now be stopping in just about the right place. And so here we are, arrival at Edinburgh Waverley, about, well, by the time the final edit's done, I think it'll be about two hours after departing away from here. Certainly been quite a long journey, and it takes a lot of, well, it's taken a lot of work to learn and drive, certainly. But yes, thank you for watching this video, I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to follow me on Facebook for further updates, then uh, the link to my Facebook page is in the video description. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, then I've got the link to my Patreon page in the video description. Description. And if you'd like to check out my photography or future uh, travel plans for making travel documentaries, then please check out PTG Photography or PTG Travel, both also on Facebook. Once again, thank you for watching.